Welcome back to the Steel City Sports Podcast. Today we're going to be talking about the AFC West predictions and breakdowns. Very interesting division because last year it seemed like all these teams were going to be you know, in the hunt for making the playoffs. We had some disappointments, obviously, with the Raiders and the Broncos. The Broncos, arguably one of the most disappointing teams last year. And, of course, we have the reigning Super Bowl champions in this division. So this is a really fun one to talk about. Let's get into it now. In at fourth place in this division, we have the Las Vegas Raiders. Made a very questionable move, in my opinion, uh, getting rid of Derek Carr in exchange to bring in Jimmy Garoppolo. In my opinion, Jimmy Garoppolo is just a worse version of Derek Carr. I think Derek Carr is uh, a better passer and also, of course, is way more healthy than Jimmy Garoppolo is. Uh, for me, if they were going to get rid of Derek Carr, it would be to start a rebuild, which you know could still be the case. We have to see how the draft plays out. Uh, they're definitely in the hunt to get one of these younger quarterbacks like a Will Levis or an Anthony Richardson. And that would make sense if if they're doing that, that would make sense to bring in Jimmy G as like their one-year bridge quarterback. If they don't draft the quarterback and it's just like, yeah, we're going ahead with Jimmy G, that makes no sense at all for, my, for me. Um, there's still pieces on this team that I like individually, but overall it's just not a very well-put-together team, particularly on the defensive side of the ball. The defense is drastically bad, and also for the fact that you have Max Crosby and Chandler Jones and you're one of the worst teams at getting sacks in the NFL just makes no sense. Chandler Bust (laughs) was – I called him Chandler Bust. Chandler Jones was a clear bust. You know, I think Chandler Bust is a fitting uh, nickname for Chandler Jones because he got all that money to come play for the Raiders, and he was very, very disappointing this past year. I don't think he even recorded a sack till like week nine last year or something like that. So there's clear, vital flaws with the Raiders' defense. The offense can be capable because I like their weapons there. If Jimmy G is healthy, you know, we all know how Jimmy G plays. He's a distributor. He's a game manager. They have weapons for him to do that with Devontae. Hunter Renfro, they just got Jacoby Myers from New England. They still have Josh Jacobs, who was the leading rusher this past season. There's pieces here, but ultimately the defense is too flawed. I don't trust Josh McDaniels or McDaniel, whatever it is, uh, as a head coach. I don't think anyone really should. And uh, it's it was made clear that he probably would have been fired, but the Raiders don't have enough money to hire a new head coach, which is, you know, kind of just sums up the Raiders franchise as a whole. So overall. They have some good pieces, but as a whole, I just don't trust them. So they're at last place in this division. In at the third spot, we have the Denver Broncos. And if you watched my video I posted about a week ago, the most intriguing teams in the NFL, Denver was on that team for a number of reasons. Number one, we still know that this is a phenomenal defense. Despite all their problems last year on the offensive side of the ball, this was still one of the best defenses in the NFL. And on looking at the offensive side of the ball, you obviously have one of the biggest Uh, potentially X factors in the NFL with Sean Payton returning as a head coach. And, you know, Denver gave him a lot of money to come in and clean up this mess of an offense that Nathaniel Hackett and Russell Wilson created last year. So I could see this team potentially being good just because of the Sean Payton effect. Although I'm not the biggest Sean Payton fan in the world. I think he definitely had some stinkers at the end in New Orleans, but Um, You cannot deny the fact that he's obviously a massive, massive upgrade over Nathaniel Hackett, pairing him with Russ. Russ very clearly wanted Sean Payton to be the coach. So that pairing is going to be very interesting to see. Um, But I still ultimately have some uh, fundamental issues with Russell Wilson's game. It's not like it was all the playbook design that was bad. And don't get me wrong, it was bad. Nathaniel Hackett deserves a lot of blame. But I feel like a lot of people are giving Russell Wilson a pass on last year just because of Nathaniel Hackett. That should not be the case. You look at Russell Wilson, two aspects of his game, I think, have severely declined from whenever he was a superstar in Seattle. Uh, Number one, his running ability, his ability to get out of the pocket and play make, that's what made him so great in Seattle. I didn't really see any of that at all last year. He didn't, it didn't look like he wanted to get outside of the pocket at all. Uh, I don't know if that's a case of He's been banged up, and that's starting to take its toll on his body. Or if, you know, he got that big-ass contract, why would he throw his body on the line now that he's got the money? I don't know. Uh, Again, I hate accusing players of giving up after they they get paid, but we've seen it happen before. Uh, And another part of his game that's severely declined is his arm just is nowhere near as strong as it once was. You know, it looks like, at least last season, 
beyond 10 yards, he had a noodle arm. He could not throw the ball accurately or with any real force on the ball. And this is a team that has good receivers, so it's not like he was throwing to uh, scrubs. You know, Cortland Sutton is a Pro Bowl-level receiver. Jerry Judy, kind of a disappointment for me. I really thought he would be a superstar by this point in his career, but he's he's okay. He's a good starting-level receiver, and the O-line's good as well. It's definitely better than the O-lines he had in Seattle. So I'm very, very intrigued to see if Sean Payton can clean this mess up like I said, the defense is still really good, but ultimately, I just don't trust Russ anymore. So he'll have to prove it to me uh, to earn my trust back. So Denver is at three. In at the runner-up position, number two, we have the Los Angeles Chargers. And if you listen to me at all last year, I think there's one fatal flaw with the Bolts. And that, of course, is Brandon Staley. I've been on this train ever since his first year. I thought Brandon Staley should have been fired. And the fact that he still... The head coach, for me, is mind-boggling because this team, roster-wise, should be competing for a Super Bowl, but under Brandon Staley's regime, they've done nothing but disappoint. And You look at year one, he calls that ridiculous timeout at the end of the Raider game, causes them a playoff berth. Then you look at this past year, I mean, the, the lead they gave up is just so fitting for the Chargers organization. The fact that they blew that lead, I think they were up... 24-0 Twenty-four to zero at halftime. Trevor Lawrence had thrown four picks, and they were clearly in the driver's seat. Now Herbert definitely does get some blame for that, but overall, I credit that a lot to Staley. And I just don't understand why he's still there. What does he have pictures on the owner or something? I just don't understand how he's been able to keep this job. Um, despite that, despite my disdain for Brandon Staley. This roster is excellent. They're going to be getting J.C. Jackson back. He was injured for a large portion of last year. Definitely a big year for him. He's got to prove if uh, he really is worth that big deal they gave him. Because we've seen this happen a lot of times where really good defensive players in New England go elsewhere and they kind of just fall off a cliff. You know, Malcolm Butler when he went to Tennessee, Jamie Collins going to the Browns, uh, countless other examples where... These guys, Belichick really develops well, and they go somewhere else, they get paid, and they just never live up to that deal. And this is a big year for J.C. He's a big physical corner. Um, I like him a lot, but I really want to see, is he another one of those uh, signature Belichick uh, projects? Um, Outside of him, though, the defense is really good. You, of course, have Derwin James, one of the best playmakers on that side of the ball, Khalil Mack is definitely aging, but he's still a monster to be uh, reckoned with, of course, whenever he has Bosa on the other side of the ball. Bosa, one of the best, you know, premier edge rushers in the NFL as a whole. And looking at the offensive side of the ball, you, of course, have Justin Herbert, who I think is undisputedly a top five quarterback in the NFL right now. Now, if you want to get buggled down in the order, I get that. Um, And if you guys want to see me do a uh, quarterbacks ranked list, uh, please put that down in the comments because I'd be more than happy to do that. Whether you want to see me do top 10, top 15, or if you want me to rank all the starting quarterbacks, I don't care. I'll do it. Um, Herbert's definitely in the top five, though. He's incredible. Um, I think he's the only player to ever start off the first three seasons of his career with 4,500 or, or more yards. I could have completely butchered that stat, but I think that is the stat. He's just a production machine. Regardless of what's going on around him, I mean, he didn't have his number one weapon, Keenan Allen, for most of last year and still didn't miss a beat in terms of production. Mike Williams, of course, was like the only good receiver left, and he was getting double covered all the time. Um, The O-line is definitely getting better. Um, Austin Eckler looks like he's coming back. I thought he was a goner for sure, but didn't really get any bites this offseason, so I think he will be back with the Chargers. And like I said, overall, I... I don't understand why Staley is still the coach here, but the talent on this team is just too much to deny. There's no way they can miss the playoffs. Um, Now, they might get to the playoffs and pull another stinker like they did against Jacksonville, but they just have way too much talent, particularly a quarterback, to miss playoffs again. So they're here at two. I have them as a wild card team. And, of course, at number one, we have the dynasty, the Kansas City Chiefs in a rebuilding year, won the Super Bowl. And the reason why last year, if you watched, I picked the Chargers to win this division. The main reason why I did that is because I had no faith at all in the Chiefs' defense. you got to give the Chiefs a lot of credit. Obviously, the offense is the, the pretty, the fancy part. That gets all the credit. But the defense 
the way they developed all those kids to be real contributing playmakers in the backfield particularly is mind-blowing. You know, the fact that they lost Tyron Matthew, their best defensive player, I would argue, and they didn't miss a beat. And also, you know, outside of the defense, the offense, losing Tyreek Hill, who a lot of people, probably myself, I'd have to write out the list, the best receiver in football, Tyreek Hill, losing that guy and replacing him with Juju, who is Nowhere near the caliber of Tyreek Hill, not even in terms of skill, but also in terms of style. They're nowhere near uh, style. You know, Tyreek Hill is an absolute speed demon, speed monster. That's why he fit in so well with Mahomes' gigantic arm. He could just lob it down the field 40 yards easy. Um, You know, you could look up. There's probably a 10-minute compilation of just throws where Mahomes throws it over the top to Tyreek 40 yards down the field. Um, We're just Juju. Juju's a very different type of player. He's not a speedster. He's very much more a technical route runner kind of guy. And the fact that they integrated him into the offense so transitious, transitionally, whatever the hell that word is, um, Tyreek or uh, Travis Kelsey, of course, still there. He was uh, got off to a slow start, but really became a monster towards the end of the year. And of course, in the playoffs, he's Mahomes' security blanket. And uh, yeah, I mean, this is the team to beat in the NFL right now. They just won their second Super Bowl in, what is it now, three or four years. Uh, they are on fire, and, you know, it's looking like they are the dynasty of this era. And I'm never going to pick against them again as long as Mahomes is here. You know, I'm, I learned that lesson, that lesson last year where I kind of wrote them off because of their defense, but they did a really, really good job of developing that defense They have essentially the same exact team except for Juju's gone, which I don't think will matter much. Mahomes could throw to me and probably still win the Super Bowl. Um, Also, they lost Eric Bieniemy, but I think that's kind of an interesting one. Obviously, it's more interesting for the Washington side because he's there now. I don't think it'll really have that big of an impact on the offense just because you still have Mahomes. You still have Andy Reid. I don't think that's going to be a big blemish. And the O-line is still solid. Um, I am interested to see what they do in the draft uh, because despite all the praise I'm heaping on the on the Chiefs, there are some needs for this team. Receiver in particular. Losing Juju, as, as many gripes as I have with Juju, he was probably your number one receiver this past year. He's gone. So who's your number one now? MVS, um, Sky Moore. And I get it. I just said, like, Mahomes can throw to anyone, but you definitely want some more talent at that position. Uh, you also need some work with your linebacker core is pretty thin. Um, I don't know. I'm interested to see. We'll obviously do a draft breakdown. But that has been my review of the AFC West. If you made it this far, thank you for watching. Please like, subscribe, and please leave a comment. Tell me uh, some video ideas you'd like to see me do. I'm, I'm down to do really any type of ranking or prediction video. I don't care. You name it, I'll do it. So that's been the Steel City Sports Podcast. Thanks for listening.